us, let's bring in Mark Thiessen, American Enterprise Institute scholar and former chief speechwriter for President George W. Bush, also a Fox News contributor, and Y.J. Fisher, former State Department policy advisor to Hillary Clinton and John Kerry, and she helped implement the Iran deal. Y.J., let me start with you, because during the course of the campaign, one of the things that Hillary Clinton was arguing was that President Trump wanted to rip up this Iran deal, and she thought that was a huge mistake, and you're one of the people who helped do all of the lead-up negotiations to make this deal happen, and yet you feel, it, it sounds to me like you now agree with President Trump that, that he's right to want to make changes. Well, I think it's really important to start by saying that the deal is working. Right, The IAEA inspectors have said that multiple times. So there's good reason to make sure that we preserve this deal because it's working. And I actually want to note one thing that General King was saying. I think it's also really important to understand what the deal actually covers. Right, This issue about IAEA inspectors having access to military sites, they already do. Right, the additional protocol already allows them to have access to all sites, declared and undeclared, civilian or military. So for those reasons, absolutely, we want to keep this deal. But of course, it's always better to get more concessions from the Iranians. I absolutely would love to see the Iranians curtail their ballistic missile program. And I think that there is a bigger deal to be had where they could tail, curtail their ballistic missile weapons program in exchange for the U.S. relaxing its remaining sanctions. Yeah. Uh, Mark, I, you always hear the president talk about the billions that went over on the plane uh, as part of this deal. And he believes that they have continued uh, their you know, they're the leading state sponsor of terrorism, that they have used that money that we gave them to keep doing that. He thinks this is a bad deal. What do you think on what we saw today and heard from the French president and President Trump? I think he's made some breakthroughs with the French president, and it would be good if we could get the French and the Europeans on board uh, to closing up some of the loopholes in this deal. Uh, you know, the, the, this deal is actually worse than the, North, than the deal that Bill Clinton cut with the North Koreans in 1994, because back then the North Koreans had to cheat on the deal in order to develop nuclear weapons. Here the Iranians don't have to cheat, because the deal doesn't, doesn't shut down any of their nuclear sites. It allows them to continue to do R&D on centrifuges and, other, and, uh, and modernize their reactors, and it has no restrictions on ballistic missiles. So they just have to, and it has a sunset clause in 10 to 15 years, so they just have to keep on chugging along as they are, develop their ballistic missiles, and in 10 or 15 years they can break out as a nuclear power with missiles that can hit Israel and other places. But the other big flaw of the deal, uh, Martha, is that this was supposed to be a heralding a new era in our relations with Iran. It was supposed to change Iran's behavior. Look at Iran's behavior around the world. They're, 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 funding, uh, they're funding terrorists across the world. They're, they're continuing to hold American hostages. They just sent drones from Syria over over Israeli territory. They're testing ballistic missiles that can reach Israel. They're funding a, a, a Hezbollah army in Syria uh, that, is, that is going to cause terror across the world. They're funding rebels in Yemen. I mean, th if that's success, I don't know what failure is. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's a great point. Um, YJ, what do you think? I think what's really interesting is that President Trump's fixation on tearing up the nuclear deal has actually distracted him from pushing back against Iran in the region. Right? If President Trump and National Security Advisor John Bolton and Secretary of State nominee Mike Pompeo actually wanted to push back on Iran, there is a set of steps that they would be taking, right? They would be cutting off Iran's air, sea, and land access to its proxies, which they use to send material and personnel to their proxies. They'd be keeping Iranians from building up a presence on Israel's border. They would be reducing the IRGC's grip on the Iranian economy, which is a really important source of funding for the IRGC. And yet we don't see the administration doing any of that because they're solely fixated on ripping up the nuclear deal. Mark, you're laughing. Why? You just described the yeah, because you just described the Obama policy. Obama was so fixated on reaching this deal with the Iranians that he completely took his his foot off the gas on all those things that she just described. Uh, we, they were they were bending over backwards in order to get this deal and turn their turn their blind eye to the point that they even sent over 150 billion dollars in in unmarked bills on a plane uh, to to Iran. So the idea that Trump is distracted by the Iran deal that's the Obama for uh, Iran policy described in a nutshell. But I mean, you're both pointing out something that's wrong with the deal which is that it didn't have any impact on behavior. It allowed them to still act as a proxy in Yemen and in Syria. Um, it, it didn't, it, it was, 
very isolated in terms of what it addressed, YJ. And that, that's part of the problem that the president sees, you know, and Mark's saying that the, the deal that you helped construct is exactly why we're in this box. I think it's definitely true that this is a deal that that only addresses the nuclear program, right? And that's why I would say that the Obama administration complemented it with an aggressive regional approach. And it's the regional approach that we're missing from the Trump administration. I think one of the things that the Obama administration definitely recognized about the potential of the nuclear deal is that it had the ability to weaken the hardliners' grip within the country, right? And so ripping up the deal would actually make Iran, would actually embolden Iran quite significantly. But, but regardless, Regardless, it absolutely needs to be complemented by a strong regional approach, and that's something we should all be asking the Trump administration to put forward. Yeah. Uh, Mark, I want to change gears for just a moment as we wait uh, and watch sure. this. It's about 14 minutes after the hour, and the White House was going to get started with the dinner at 7 o'clock. They're usually fairly punctual, but we're watching. Maybe somebody's having a tough time getting ready for, for the evening. Um, but I want to ask you about this Ronnie Jackson issue. Um, the, the White House, sure. the president spoke with his personal doctor who he has proposed to head the VA, mm -hmm. which is really one of the most important, you know, fundamental things that he wanted to fix in his presidency. He talked so much on the campaign trail about doing better by our veterans. So he proposed Ronnie Jack Admiral Ronnie Jackson for this position. Uh, then there was yep. a lot of pushback today. They met in the Oval Office and the president came out of it. Essentially, the message came out that he was going to stand by him. What do you think is going on behind all this? Yep. I think it's good that the president is standing behind Ronnie Jackson. I, I worked with Ronnie Jackson in the White House. Uh, I know him. Uh, he's a good man. And he's exactly the kind of person that we need at the VA right now. I mean, one of the problems we have, everyone's going around saying, well, he doesn't have management experience. Well, you know what? The last two VA secretaries were, were managers. Uh, Shulkin was a hospital administrator. His predecessor was the CEO of Procter Gamble. And look at all the problems that the VA had under their leadership. Ronnie Jackson, what Ronnie Jackson brings to the table is leadership. He's a re Navy Rear Admiral who was a combat medic on the ground in Iraq. He was the guy who, when the helicopter landed with a guy who had just been blown up by an IED, Ronnie Jackson is the guy who stuck his hands in his body and got blood all over his hands trying to save that guy's life and stabilize him. He understands the plight of our veterans in a way that no VA nominee ever has. And so I think having Ronnie Jackson, somebody there at the top, he can surround himself with all sorts of management experts, but you need a veteran who understands, who has seen the trauma that these people have experienced on the battlefield, who has treated these people, People, who has who has literally felt their blood on his hands in order to save their lives? That's the kind of leadership you need at the VA, and I'm glad that Ronnie's sticking. Mm -hmm. According to the news reports, he's sticking in it because he's exactly the right person to lead the Veterans Administration. All right. uh, the White House senior official saying this: He has never even been the subject of an Inspector General review, and he will certainly not be railroaded by a bitter ex-colleague who was removed from his job. You know, I, I think people are so quick sometimes to uh, decide that someone. Has has to go because something has come up in the process of vetting them. And we saw today, I think, you know, sort of an egregious example of people immediately piling on before there was even clarity on what these issues were. And Ronnie Jackson himself said he hadn't even seen uh, the details behind some of the things that were being said about him. So um, sometimes it, it is a good idea to yep. pause and take a moment and uh, consider uh, a man who has had a very stellar career and, and probably deserves a, a very good, Absolutely. clear look and assessment. Man. And put his life on the line for our country. Absolutely. Mark Thiessen, YJ Fisher, thank you very much. Good to see uh, both of you tonight. Thank you.